evening guys, Chris VA Travels out here in Halifax County and I'm visiting the Berry Hill Plantation, historic home completed 1844 and it now serves as a resort and spa and I'm staying in the Cavalier room and it's kind of a little oasis out here in the middle of nowhere. I'm in South Boston and uh, yeah, I'll give you the obligatory room tour. And then I'll show you around. It's going to be kind of a long video. The grounds are extensive. You've got outbuildings, a graveyard. I'll show you around the big house. So yeah, a lot to see. And this thing was built for James Coles Bruce. There's his silhouette. And uh, he was a Virginia delegate. And he really pushed for public education in Virginia. Public education kicked off in the 1840s here in Virginia. And his wife over here, Elizabeth... And she died 40 years old. And they're buried around back. Family cemetery. I'll go out there in a bit. So yeah, it's a pretty, pretty large room. Show you around. And over here, this will be my little workstation. <laughs> and just to let you know, there are no USB ports. So just make sure you bring some adapters. Over here, armoire. And bam your TV all right over here <clears throat> map of the resort and like I say pretty big right here is the main house I'm staying in the inn, and I'm in the very back corner but yeah you've got tennis courts basketball courts swimming pool if I'd have known I would have brought my trunks I may drive into town South Boston's about three miles away uh, go to Walmart maybe grab a, a cheap pair <laughs> Your outbuildings right here, uh, garden, uh, this cem the cemetery I was telling you about. So, yeah. Oh, and these two, uh, the Jefferson Temple and the Lafayette Temple, these wings right here are now like special suites you can stay in. So, pretty tall mirror right there. All right, so over here, got your coffee, give you some water. Ta -da. All right, so you got a safe, a blanket up there. And then, all right, so you can do some uh, ironing. A couple robes right there. And everybody wants to see the bathroom, know what to expect. So here you go. All your soap, shampoos, lotions. And yeah, everybody wants to see the shower head. <laughs> so there you go. Looks pretty strong. There you go. All right, so quick room tour. I'm gonna finish unpacking and take a look around. Good morning. All right, I'm gonna get right to it. Take a walk around the big house. And I'll just walk you through the inn on the way out. And some silhouettes over here. A colonial figure right there. Can't uh, make out the name. But, alright, yeah, stairs right there. We're on the fourth floor. A little elevator. Back here you've got ice, a sink, and microwave. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, pictures giving a, a little bit of information along the... The hall here and this is Eliza's garden. Eliza an avid gardener collected native as well as foreign plants for the former garden here at Berry Hill. Kind of hard to read it's written in a uh, fancy cursive. But yeah pretty neat light fixtures and there's a lot of rooms I don't know how many but I was surprised. And here's the architect right here. And this thing is modeled after the Second National Bank up in Philadelphia. John Johnson. Pause and read. And I actually uh, walked by that thing on my uh, tour of Philadelphia. Old video I have up. So over here, music in the mansion. Playing the harp. Kids dancing. And Greek Revival Mansion. Bear Hill. Fashionable. Double parlor. Yeah, so you can go ahead and read that. Cool. Okay, some more of these silhouettes. 
Guy reading, she's writing. Got his little top hat. And right over there is the swimming pool. Like I say, I was tempted to go to Walmart and buy a cheap bathing suit. Um, I stuck my head in there uh, when I checked in last night. And uh, yeah, it was a pretty decent pool and nobody was in there. I would have had it all to myself. So James Coles Bruce in the Virginia Assembly. There he is. Uh, he was known as a great order, kind of like Patrick Henry. And uh, Orter, yeah, trained in law at Harvard University uh, and the University of Virginia. Served as Halifax County Delegate in the Virginia Assembly, 1831 to 1833. Okay. Keep on moving. And over here, Nicholas Biddle. And I think he, he had something to do with that second national bank. I know he opposed uh, Andrew Jackson uh, when it came to the dispute about the banking system. I can't give you all the details, but you, you can pause and read. Um, I'm not sure his relationship to this house, uh, but oh, it wasn't commissioned. Uh, William Strickland, Strickland to design the second national bank of Philadelphia. Yeah, you can pause and read, but uh, there's James right there. Okay. All right, main lobby right up there, and dining <clears throat> at Berry Hill. Social life in the mansion centered on the dining room. So, okay, a bunch of these silhouettes. This guy's a little tri-cornered hat on. And okay, so the artist is August. I do art. I do art. And there's a self portrait. Pretty big goatee right there. And one last lady. All right. And they've got kind of a little lounge area. Kind of a little business area right here. Um. Maryland basketball messages and papers of the presidents oh cool mantle we'll earn some garland and yeah they do weddings and you can play checkers and chess over here it looks like and some tic-tac-toe and more of these silhouettes uh, of all the different Virginia presidents Thomas Jefferson there's George and Martha over here Zachary Taylor William Henry Harrison uh, you eat breakfast back uh, through there but um who all right so it looks like it's kind of drizzling out here I didn't realize uh, yeah, uh, hopefully I'm not going to get too wet. But yeah, let me walk uh, around this thing. It was actually completed around Christmas of 1843. Giant Greek Revival style building. It looks like they hold events right here. I see uh, in this grove of cedars some lights. And check this thing out. This is actually the largest Greek Revival style home in Virginia. Larger than Arlington House. And check out those giant fluted columns, Doric columns. And the thing's made of uh, brick, large brick. Uh, it's stuck it over. Yeah, kind of some mismatched windows and looks like wings. I'm sure those were added later on. Okay, so let me wrap around. Yeah, this place is huge. The millstone over here. And these side buildings are, are modeled after the Quincy Market up in Boston. If you want to take a look, uh, I did a, uh, a video on the Freedom Trail, another old video. Got it in there. Oh, and they were, uh, one was used as an office building, the other was used as a schoolhouse for a time. And now they're just kind of, uh, they're like nicer suites you can stay in. A oh, random note, football star Emmett Smith has stayed in one of these. <laughs> He's got family that's uh, rooted, traced to this area. 
And there it is, giant Acropolis, Berry Hill, and uh, very imposing, uh, yeah, very stately building. You must feel like you're looking at some judicial building or a giant bank. Uh, well, I guess it is modeled after the Second National Bank there in Philadelphia. But again, those uh, giant columns stand out. That might be the longest pediment I've ever seen. And uh, the, the steps are made of actual granite from a ravine that's only about uh, half a mile away. So, but uh, yeah, stuccoed facade. And I'll walk up and uh, take a, a closer look. Yeah, and uh, okay, kind of a, a basic uh, entrance there. You would think, well, I guess it kind of doesn't fit the uh, Greek Revival style, but you would think they would have a more decorative uh, entrance. But yeah, still, still nice though. Um, again, very stately building. I feel like I'm in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, staring up at this thing. So, all right, let me uh, take a walk around the side of this thing. Another hat on back here. Uh, not as many windows over here. And I'll go ahead and wrap around and add on. Oh, and I'll tell you that this land was first granted to William Byrd, the founder of Richmond. And he was gifted the land uh, as kind of a reward for mapping out the North Carolina Virginia border. And that would have been, I don't know the year, but I'm going to guess around the 1730s. That's kind of when he was uh, moving and shaking, I guess. And the first plantation home was built here in 1745. on walking and then 1841 James Coles Bruce purchased this land and the house was actually completed around Christmas 1843 and then uh, into 1844 five burnums over here what is this some sort of bird bath let me uh, get out of the path of this yeah I can smell breakfast pancakes <laughs> Okay, another just decorative gristmill over here. So, and I can't tell from far away. This looks like a ginkgo right here, but uh, I can't I can't see the leaves good enough. And what is this thing? Kind of gnarly tree. The uh, leaves haven't grown out yet. And uh, I don't know, mulberry tree. I, I don't know what that is. So. And you'll see a lot of these stone walls from the antebellum period. They surround these places a lot of time. They're just dry, dry stacked, uh, no mortar or anything between them. And uh, old stepway right here. All right, and a bunch of outbuildings. Walk around this, uh, these things. Okay, and you'll see parking down there and you take a left, there's more parking. And over here, the carriage house. I believe they offer tours on the weekend. Today's Wednesday, so. And she said I'll, I'll be going inside the house. She said I could, uh, I could walk in and walk around. So, yeah, old carriage house. Um, you think there'd be a larger entrance, but it just kind of looks like a barn. Anyway, so on a, again stone foundation must have come from that ravine ravine nearby. Yeah, I see a padlock on that. All right, what was this? Uh, yeah, corn crib, that's what I thought. Are those kind of vents up there? Hmm, interesting. But uh, yeah, metal uh, corn crib. All right, yeah, padlocked again. As they say, uh, James Coles Bruce, he died 1865. He died just before Richmond fell. 
and his it, his wife died young, 40 years old. A lot of tragedy, actually, because seven of their 11 children died prematurely. So, okay, some old tools over here. Boy, grind up uh, some sort of chipper or something. You don't want to get your hand hand caught in there. Yeah. Something right there. Let me wrap around. Anyway, yeah, I'll walk down to the cemetery and take a look at some of those graves. And just kind of a little kind of herb garden over here. Kind of covered up. All right, so these are just stables, it says. Dovetail design right there. And yeah, that thing's got some age to it. Held up on that stone. Okay, over here, the overseer's house. And this thing, clapboard, but kind of hod uh, hodgepodge. You'll see it was originally some sort of like a log cabin. Walk around. And I think they've got slave quarters around here somewhere. I wish they had a little map of the property. But uh, I'll wander around, see what I can find. Okay. And I'm sure they probably just for storage a boot scraper down there. Yeah, padlocked. I don't know. Huh. Okay, and down there you'll see tennis courts. And there's a basketball court also. Okay. Let me, uh, I'll walk down this hill and see what I can find. Wow, so yeah, this wall surrounds the entire property. It's pretty long. I remember seeing it when I pulled in way over there. And I see a white building to the right. Um, maybe if I wrap around that uh, cemetery's back there. Um, see some arrows pointing this way. Maybe I should have driven, but especially since it's a little, little bit rainy. But uh, also tell you uh, again, oh, okay, here's a cemetery. Um, okay, uh, kind of a terraced. Uh, okay, so up here, it might, might have been the gardens up here. I, I know a lot of the original gardens. Uh, well, I was gonna get to, I was gonna say, James Coles Bruce died, uh, like I say, 1865. House was passed to his oldest son. Let me see if I can walk up through here. Alexander. And Alexander ran it. Surprisingly, the plantation was still pretty successful, which most were either sold off to carpet baggers, uh, broken apart. But he still ran it pretty successfully, although he did have to sell off 2,000 acres. And yeah, nice little uh, grove back here. And he ran it up until his passing in 1906. And he lived uh, here pretty much his entire life. And then it was passed to his son named Malcolm. He was an attorney, worked a lot out of Richmond. And he mainly, it sounds like, lived in Richmond. Uh, off Monument Avenue. But still kind of kept this, I guess, as a summer home. They would have big uh, formal parties and whatnot out here. Um, I think I'll just cut, cut through. Yeah. And then after he passed away... The family sold off the uh, the property. Oh wow! Okay, these are some large uh, headstones. All right, let me go down. Uh, take a look at these. Um, oh, I can tell you uh, when Malcolm owned the house and he was throwing those lavish parties. A lot of well-to-do's. Uh, Edith Bowling Wilson, Woodrow Wilson's wife, would attend. Alexander Bruce, the man I was just uh, talking about, lived basically his entire life here. Oh, that's not him, though. That must be a... Uh, oh, this uh, died 13 years old. Uh, maybe it was his son. Yeah, son of Alexander. Okay. So that would be his son, most likely. Richard Bruce. Died 1857. And what do we have over here? James Bruce. Okay, well, here we go. There he is. 
here's his grave and can't make that out but there he is died March 28 1865 that's a pretty neat kind of design all right, and Eliza's wife, like I say, she died. She died 1850, uh, just 40 years old. So pretty sad. Again, seven of their 11 children died prematurely. And looks like they had a grandchild die prematurely as well. Um, okay, so would this be the Alexander? No. Okay, so this person died 22 years old. No, 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 died. Okay, this is him. My, my, I'm sorry. Yeah, he married uh, 1855. All right, so there's Alexander, who I was talking about, pretty much lived his entire life here, almost. Um, these ledger-style uh, tombstones over here. And this is actually facing this way. Paul Carrington Jr. Hmm. Thing's kind of broken apart. That one's chipped off. All right, let me go back over. And yeah, there is a slave cemetery around here. I'm gonna try to find that. Mary Bruce, okay. Yeah, she made it to 1916, 81 years old. All right, okay. There's a big Latin cross on this one. Walter Bruce, son of Alexander Bruce. Oh, wow, he lived a long life. Died in 1953. Betty, she lived a uh, long life in Malcolm. Yep, 1948. Oh, this is old. Can't make it out. It's got a little footstone on it too. So, okay, just a few more. What does this sign say over here? Was he some sort of veteran or something? Doesn't say anything. Uh, all right. Oh, so this is probably a child's grave, yeah. Hmm, okay. And uh, smaller ones over here. I know I said a lot, but uh, a lot of these uh, graves in the Victorian area, you, you had the headstone and the footstone, and the idea was this is your final resting place. It's, it's actually kind of it, to mimic a bed, kind of. Little design right there. Can't quite make it out. Can't make out the name. Same design here. So I see 1860 there, and then... Uh, can't make out the other, the, the death Eliza, another Eliza. Hmm. Died 1861, I feel like it says. And there's just a footstone there, so maybe that, or that broke off here, okay. These obelisk uh, style. James Bruce. 1763 to 1837. Wow. This has been here that long? I feel like it's been, this isn't original because I don't think the lettering and all that would still be, it would be weathered over. But anyway, so yeah, the Bruce and Carrington Cemetery. All right, so let me see if I can find the slave house in the slave graves. I decided to turn around, take a walk around the big house first, and then I'm gonna ask where the slave cabins are before I stray and get myself lost. And, uh, cause I think I may have to drive to get there. It might be easier to drive. So I cut up through here. And up here we've got Darby's Tavern, place to eat. Oh, okay, so here's the ice house. And yeah, these ice houses, they usually extend, there's gonna be a hole in the ground, uh, 15, maybe 18 feet. And what they would do in the middle of January, they would go to the closest river, pond, whatever, creek, cut, cut uh, blocks of ice, 
kind of surround insulate them with either sawdust uh, leaves straw and put them down in the hole and then bam summertime you've got ice so yeah it's the ice house all right so Dar darby's tavern i ate here last night and this is kind of uh just a, a regular restaurant a little bar inside the nicer restaurant is the mansion restaurant inside walkway here let me figure out how to uh, how to get there but yeah this is the back of the house you see they didn't have this stuck out probably just wasn't worth it I guess not many people are gonna uh, gonna see that but uh see if I can walk in right here or walk in here okay pretty nice all right so over here we've got white sulfur spring in Montgomery County quite a spread Got some horses. Looks like they're racing. They're running. Those two are at least. Old clock. Struggling Springs. And this is in Augusta County. Almost looks like an inn. Yeah, again, quite a complex. Ah, there's radio music playing. That's death to a vlogger. I might get a copyright strike, so I might have to play some music in the background to kind of drown it out. Okay, guys, we're walking into the back of Berry Hill. Okay, in this, uh, this place is known for these dual flights. The stair, stairwell right here, check it out. main stairway second floor okay the second okay so he really he modeled the interior after that second uh, bank of the United States as well there it is William Strickland Philadelphia all right so it looks like this is part of that mansion restaurant I was telling you about that nice restaurant so history of the world it says and this is Fountain, uh, Park Fountain in City Hall in New York. Colonial mirror over here. And this is Charleston right here. Yeah, this is from the colonial era. Punch bowl down here. Oh, listen to this. This marble was supposed to have come from the same quarry as the marble that was used uh, for Michelangelo's statue of David. How crazy is that? Okay, cool lock plate on that uh, door right here. I'll just show you the other part of this restaurant. Okay, so lots of marble, uh, several marble fireplaces. There's George. You've always got to have a picture of George. So you got to sort out. George and Martha. Okay. And there's uh, William Park Custis down there. Uh, elevator. I think I can cut over here. I guess I'll just wander around. T set over here. Check out the claw feet. I'll tell you something interesting. If you notice from that time period, almost all the claws have toenails. Uh, that's because the artist had never really seen a tiger's claw and uh, they just assumed they had toenails on them. <laughs> all right, let me go up here to the right. So is this that second national bank? Yup, there it is, up in Philly. 
so there he is. That is Busta George right there. Nice piano over here. This is an antique, almost original condition, sent it to play like a minor piano. Oh. Oh, check this out. Yeah, this looks like a different type of marble. Maybe this is the marble that came from the quarry the Statue of David uh, was made from. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty nice mantle right here. Rosettes. Oh, wow, okay. Are these the Virginia presidents, I'm guessing? Or just the presidents, period? Yeah, the first several. Okay, there's the uh, Parthenon right there. Okay, Corinthian Columns. Uh, just to talking about the different orders, uh, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. And this must be Eliza right here, I'm assuming. Nice frame on that thing. Okay, different temples in Greece and Rome. Oh, okay, bar right here. Cool place to hang out. Let's see what books they've got over here. Monte Carlo, Plato, hmm. Yeah, and they've got noted musicians that come here on occasion. Okay. Oh, I didn't really look at the uh, kind of empire style. Kind of urn design right here. This one's been sat on a lot. Okay, keep on moving. It looks like I can go upstairs, so walk up there. Kind of almost looks like a Quaker, but okay. All right, so let me walk up this noted uh, staircase. it is okay the Vermont State House pretty similar same kind of pattern the cornice yeah basically a replica if you minus the dome on top oh yeah it's a little warmer up here too which is good I wonder if there are people staying in these rooms 1858. Okay, Mount Vernon, Monticello. Two big ones here. Uh, yeah, all the rivers. And for you guys that don't know, this of course is the Eastern Shore, Northern Neck, Middle Peninsula, and this would be the Virginia Peninsula down here, down here with Williamsburg and all that. <sighs> I'm just wandering around. Uh, just people who've gotten married here, it looks like. You got some Native Americans up here, uh, over here. And I feel like the Monacan Indians were native to this area. Tachi, right there. It's, uh, it's kind of dark. Can't read that very good. There's a light on in there. Virginia. Okay. Kind of a basic room, more nice marble. History of the people of the United States.
and say, oh, hey. Can't quite read that. Hmm. All right. Okay, I think I've seen it all up here. Okay, going back down. Yeah, so, all right, I'm going to go to the desk, ask where the, uh, that slave cemetery in the slave quarters are, because supposedly they've got pretty nice kind of, of course, stone <laughs> slave quarters. Over here, a spa. And I was reading through the little pamphlet in my room. Yeah, you can get facials, massages, you can get your nails done. All of that, so. Yeah, there it is right in here. Hours are Wednesday through Sunday, 10 until 6. Like I say, the pool right here, and I know one of the doors is uh, unlocked over here. And here it is. Like I say, it's empty. It's killing me that I don't have a suit. All right, so you can play some foosball back there. Nice four foot pool. Towels over here. Little workout room right here. Take a walk through there. And just kind of little steppers, treadmills, a few dumbbells over here. I might drop it here tomorrow morning before breakfast. Cool. All right. All right. Yeah, these viburnums everywhere. the slave cabins are and all right those were all the outbuildings there are some uh, old stables right there they're just now being used as kind of carports and uh yeah so it's a walking trail locked uh locked gate right up here but yeah it's gonna be a nice little walk through uh through nature it's kind of misty out but it's not really raining so that's good okay so we're entering a, a big field I don't know how many acres this place originally was, but it was pretty big if the slave quarters are pretty much a mile and a half from the main house. And to give you a little information on slavery, the first slaves arrived in 1802, and through the course of the plantation, uh, 102 slaves lived here. So, yeah, and then when slavery ended, uh, many remained, became I guess sharecroppers are just kind of employees and still lived out here. So, and the Bruces were known to have treated their slaves really well. I know that's an awkward statement. You can never say you're treating somebody well if they're a slave, but he was born and raised in a world where slavery was the norm. He was thinking, hey, my slaves are living better than the guy down the street. And this is Berry Hill Plantation, the, uh, one of the nicest places in Virginia to be. And the uh, slave cabins are supposed to be pretty nice, made of the same stone that you've been seeing all around the property. If any of you guys decide to stay out here, I would definitely take this walk. Yeah, nice trek through nature. Quite a contrast from the uh, trips to uh, DC and New York I've taken recently. Oh, while I'm walking, I guess I'll plug my socials. Well, I don't have that many, but you can find me on Instagram, VA Travels. I pretty much just put up some pictures of sites I'm visiting. If you want to know where I'm at in real time, I'm about a month behind on actually posting these videos from, from when I come visit. I'm not big on, they tell you, I watch all these videos on 
how to become a better YouTuber, how to become a better vlogger, and they tell you, you know, put your face out there, people get to know you, but I'm not one for just taking pictures of myself and putting them out there. I'm kind of starting to warm up to it. They tell you that with a thumbnail as well on YouTube, so people will see and recognize you. And I do it sometimes if I go to a museum or just do an odd uh, hike. But when I put up, when I visit these historic homes, I just feel like it kind of ruins the picture. You have this beautiful house and you've got, you know, me <laughs> just in the corner smiling. So, yeah, anyway, oh, and uh, also you can find me on Patreon if you want to help me out. I've just got some extra videos on there. I take recommendations. So, uh, yeah, Patreon and Instagram. And I'm thinking about creating a Facebook page. And it, right now, it's starting to pick up rain. I knew it. I should have grabbed my umbrella. Oh, yeah. So, I'm down the road. I'm probably going to create a uh, Facebook page. But there's currently, I have an imposter. There's a VA Travels Facebook page. It's not me, if you see it. Some foreign account. It's got a foreign phone number linked to it. Uh, kind of a bummer. Uh, because I'm going to have to call mine. Uh, the official VA Travels or the real VA Travels. I don't know. It's kind of not as good. But uh, in, anyway, so yeah, I'll be on Facebook soon. If you see me on there right now, it's not me. <laughs> all right. So coming upon another hill. And you can imagine all this. I don't. I didn't even read what they read. Uh, what they grew out here. You would imagine uh, tobacco, of course. But I didn't see specifically. He wasn't a tobacco uh, merchant, uh, James Cole's Bruce. But yeah, you've got all this land. You know they'd be growing something. All right. So hopefully I'm going to be under a tree canopy here soon. Oh, all right. So it's coming down now. I came upon a barn, big old barn. I don't see the stone slave cabins. I feel like I've got to be getting really close. I actually ran a little bit to get down here. But uh, at least I have some trees partly covering me right now. So, yeah, really old barn. Maybe there's some old, uh, see what's in there. Uh, yeah, nothing, uh, <laughs> nothing special. So, okay, it looks like maybe a creek you start to run through here. Okay, so this trail is kind of getting overgrown down here. So, yeah, I've got to be close. I've had to have been close to a mile by now. It would have been cool if there's a kind of a sign just kind of at least letting you know you're headed in the right direction and letting you know maybe how much for. Okay, there they are. I see them to the left. Okay, good. So, yeah, a little, a little runoff down here, a little creek. And, okay, Maybe you'll see how good it's raining right now. Okay, made it. So you'll get the end of that little fire road that I was walking down. You'll take a left and bam, here we are. Stone slave cabins. And let me just take a walk around. Yeah, I kind of wish I would have wore better shoes, but I, I didn't know it was gonna start coming down like this. Uh, anyway, so kind of like a, a slave apartment. I had many rooms in there, and obviously you will see the chimneys, and you can tell where there was a second floor uh, fireplace up there, and maybe some holes right there where wood beams would, would have uh, been. But yeah, this is pretty cool. All right, I guess I'm just going to first walk around, I guess. Walk around it. All right, so here's one of the rooms. You'll see kind of mortared up in the stone. There's pediment right there, so I bet this was originally uh, maybe uh, the original house or something, and then this was an, it was added on possibly. I don't know. Okay, so. And I guess there's a, I don't know where the cemetery is. When I came off the fire road right over there, you could take a right. Maybe it's up there. I don't want to stray too far, but. It's a little uh, mushier down here on the lower ground. But, um, 
Yeah, cool. Quite a structure. Yeah, like I say, kind of fireplace up there. And I guess they didn't really have a door to the uh, other room out there. I don't think that would have been a door. Okay, I'm gonna pause and take a couple of pictures. I figured what the heck, and I came down this fire road that I told you branches off to the right. And, all right, so there's a nature outlook and the town of South Boston is this, this way, in that Diamond Hill Cemetery. So there it is right back there. There are also trails that take you to the Dan River. So, yeah, if you come out here, there's a lot of nature hikes. So, oh, all right. Um, remembrance of the enslaved, free people, burial hill plantations, must serve honor those who toiled these grounds. May their souls forever find rest in their, in your stores always be known. Faith, hope. Oh, they have the names? Oh, that's a committee, I was gonna say, because they probably wouldn't have had last names. 2022, all right, so that's a pretty quality uh, block right there. So, and then, uh, yeah, all right, so, um, all right, cool, yeah, maybe I'll just come up here, and, yeah, so a lot of birds out here, as you can hear, okay, good, another sign, you know, up here on this hill, it looks like, uh, I'm assuming, in. They're probably not gonna have uh, tombstones. Back then they just would have had kind of wooden crosses and, and whatnot that would have obviously, obviously deteriorated. But here's the Diamond Hill Cemetery. Oh, I remember that you're on sacred hollow ground. Can I get a respect? Thank you. All right. And you can see all these are fairly newer uh, trees that would have been uh, planted afterward. And sometimes you'll see kind of stones, maybe a big stone marking a headstone and some surrounding the grave. I've seen that before. Um, yeah, you'll see a, a stone up here. Uh, yeah, you'd have a decent view if uh, the trees weren't there. It's a pretty nice forest uh, up there. Okay. All right, so possibly they know the name of this place, uh, this slave. Jeez, we're gonna... hmm. All right, another kind of memorial. There's a little bench right there. All right, so yeah, it's uh, nice they've got this marked off. Kind of a little, well, I don't know if that was a fence. It looked like a fence from here, but I guess they're just branches kind of falling over. I don't think I need to go. Oh, all right. See, there's stones. Yeah, you see this a lot of times. Uh, hopefully th these are original and yeah that could be a footstone another headstone yeah another stone right here and yeah, obviously you've got the tall gra uh, gla uh, grass yeah it looks like headstone footstone and it's kind of a short grave so I don't know if this would have been a, a child a, a teenager And I, I don't want to assume that every little rock I see is some sort of headstone, but there's a rock right here, a couple over here, and these look like it looks like they were purposely placed. Yeah, this looks pretty much like a like it could quite possibly be something. Step around. So okay, yeah, there's a whole row right here, obviously. So I could have made just a little separate video on uh on this place. Yeah, here you go. Stone, stone over here. I see one, okay, there's plenty, this is pretty sizable. Like I say, all together, 102 slaves. 
So I don't know if all 102, and then I think some freed people after the Civil War, except, like I say, all the families and whatnot still lived here. So I assume it's probably some of them as well. And so it looks like this whole, probably maybe a family or something, whole row of them right here. Um, yeah, I'm surprised uh, somebody from the local college didn't come out, do some archaeology work, or just kind of sort of map things. Uh, kind of map these out. I know they've got some ground penetrating stuff I've seen used before to kind of find out where the graves are. But then again, I don't know if that would work here. That might be if there was some sort of casket or something. It, it notices. I don't know, but... Okay, so yeah, I'm glad I came out here. It was worth it. It was pretty cool. I saw some uh, what, uh, what appears to be headstones. So, but yeah, unfortunately, I'm on that time crunch I keep talking about. I'm sure I'm actually going to... Rain's picking up as you hear. So I'm probably just going to run back to my uh, my Jeep and go up there. I'll be checking out a little bit late, but barbed wire fence right down here. And is that a road down there or is that the Dan River? <laughs> I don't think it's the Dan River this close. Oh, that's a road. Well, dang. If I knew how to get there, I could have just driven to that and uh, walked, it, walked up here. Walked up here. Okay, yeah, getting out of here, and yeah, there's a road right there, so if you don't want to walk the uh, mile and a quarter, mile and a half from the from the house, yeah, find out how to uh, get here via that road. So, anyway, I think I'm going to wrap this one up. I'm going to pack up this camera and run back to my car, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be in Danville slash Martinsville the next couple days, but later this week I'm going to stop back by, fly my drone, should get some good uh, good footage. But anyway, guys, I'll uh, see you on the next one. Okay, made it back to my car. Got a little wet. <laughs> but that was a fun adventure. So anyway, see you guys.